Well, tonight in a test of presidential powers, the Supreme Court is weighing arguments over the Biden administration's COVID vaccine rules for large companies and healthcare workers. CBS's Jan Crawford is following the closely watched set of arguments that went on for hours today. With nearly 36 million adults yet to get a single dose of the vaccine, liberal justices said the dangers of the coronavirus justify the unprecedented federal mandates to encourage vaccinations. This is a pandemic in which nearly a million people have died. And this is the policy that is um, most geared to stopping all this. In extraordinary arguments amid the surge of the latest Omicron variant, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, who is not ill, opted to participate in the arguments remotely, as did two lawyers arguing against the mandates who tested positive. And for the first time, a majority of the justices, with the exception of Justice Neil Gorsuch, wore masks. In the past, the court has allowed various efforts to mandate vaccines at the state level. But in these cases, conservative justices seem skeptical about handing that sweeping power to federal agencies. This is something that the federal government has not, never done before, right? Mandated vaccine coverage. And there were practical questions to the requirement that some 80 million private employees get vaccinated or have weekly testing. Is the testing alternative viable at the present time in light of the stories that we see about the long lines that are required to be tested? The justices seem less skeptical of the more targeted mandate, which would require vaccines for more than 17 million health care workers at facilities that get federal Medicaid or Medicare money. Now, the mandate for those large companies is set to take effect on Monday, although the government says they're not going to enforce the vaccine requirement until next month. A ruling from the court on whether to block that, even temporarily, could now come any time. I'd be pretty surprised if you mandated it for any element of the general public. No, I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand to be mandatory. And no federal mandate requiring everyone to obtain a single vaccination credential. We're not counting on vaccine mandates at all. Those are decisions the federal government is not going to make. You're not going to see a central mandate coming from the federal government. And that's not the role of the federal government. You know, at the federal level, I don't have the uh, the authority to either mask mandate or, or vaccine mandate. That's not uh, what we do at the federal level. Definitely not. You don't want to mandate and try and force anyone to take the vaccine. We've never done that. There will be no federal mandate. This is a decision that historically uh, has not come from the federal government around vaccine mandates. That has not happened ever, to my knowledge, at a national level. A no federal mandate requiring everyone to obtain a single vaccination Credential. No federal mandate requiring everyone to obtain a single uh, vaccination credential. I don't see it on a national level, merely because of all the situations you have upon encroaching upon a person's freedom to make their own choice. Local businesses, local jurisdictions will work towards vaccine mandates. That is going to be locally driven and not federally driven. Can we mandate vaccines across the country? No, that's not a role that the federal government, I think, even has the power to make. There's no secret that I feel that we should not have central mandates from the federal government. But I think you won't see is a requirement for the federal government uh, to, uh, to have people get vaccinated. I wouldn't anticipate that we would be putting requirements on private sector companies. I don't think you'll ever see a mandating of vaccine, particularly for the general public. There will be no nationwide mandate. Our interest is very simple from the federal government, which is Americans' privacy and rights should be protected. But we don't want to be mandating from the federal government to the general population. It would be unenforceable and not appropriate. The federal government is backing down on a vaccine mandate for truckers just three days before it was going to take effect. This evening, a transport ministry spokeswoman said that Canadian transport truck drivers will no longer have to quarantine if they are unvaccinated or have received only one dose when crossing the border. The mandate was announced two months ago and will still be in effect for American drivers. We understand that you guys plan to rely on the Postal Service to send out these free tests whenever they're ready. But the Postal Service says they're going to have a staffing shortage because of your vaccine mandate. So would you pull back on the vaccine mandate if it meant getting people these free tests sooner? 
the Postal Service also delivered 98-99% of packages on time in advance of Christmas. And they also, their leaders have also said they're eager to take on this challenge. So we welcome that and we're looking forward to working with them to get these tests out to the public. I understand that the science says that vaccines prevent death, but I'm triple vaxxed, still got COVID. You're triple vaxxed, still got COVID. Why is the president still referring to this as a pandemic of the unvaccinated? Well, I, I think, Peter, there's a significant difference between, and you just you just experienced this, and not to expose your public health experience, but I can speak to mo mine as well. I had been triple vaxxed. I had minor symptoms. There is a huge difference between that and being unvaccinated. You are 17 times more likely to go to the hospital if you're not vaccinated, 20 times more likely to die. And those are significant, serious statistics. So yes, the impact uh, for people who are unvaccinated is far more dire than those who are vaccinated. And I'll stop here so we can get to the briefing started. But thank you for taking the time. No way. Message for vaccinated Americans who are wondering why they should continue to restrict their activities given that your health officials say most Americans will get COVID at some point. Folks, we'll talk about that later. Come on. Why should Americans trust your administration to be COVID when the virus is still around? I'm voting right. Do you think the Republicans would don't support the white rights? The virus is still around. Thank you so much. Mr. President, do you believe all the Trumpies that you need at the end of this pandemic? Thank you so much, Brad. Thank you. How much longer do you think school people have to wear masks? Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you. The U.S. Supreme Court on Thursday blocked an effort by the Biden administration that would have expanded a COVID-19 vaccine mandate to large employers nationwide, undermining a major element of the president's plan to combat the pandemic. The requirement would have applied to some 80 million employees, but in a 6-3 decision, the justices ruled the mandate exceeded a federal health and safety officer's authority. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, while disappointed by the Supreme Court's decision, said the White House will press on. Uh, we'll be calling on and we'll continue to call on businesses to immediately join those, those who have already stepped up, including one third of Fortune 100 companies uh, to institute vaccination requirements to protect their workers, customers, and communities. The unsigned ruling said that the rule issued by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration was not an ordinary use of federal power. The court wrote, quote, it is instead a significant encroachment on the lives and health of a vast number of employees. The three liberal justices on the court dissented. Justice Stephen Breyer wrote for the minority that the decision, quote, stymies the federal government's ability to counter the unparalleled threat that COVID-19 poses to our nation's workers. But the court did approve a separate mandate requiring health workers at federally funded facilities to be vaccinated. That mandate covers an estimated 10.3 million workers at 76,000 health care facilities. In that decision, Conservatives Brett Kavanaugh and Chief Justice John Roberts sided with the court's liberals in a 5-4 ruling. Both cases tested presidential powers to address a monumental public health crisis that already has killed more than 845,000 Americans. The United States leads the world in COVID-19 deaths and infections. What do you what do you think of the, the new rule to require vaccination of all NHS staff? I'm, I'm not happy about that. So, You're not happy about it, tell yeah. me. So I've had COVID at some point. Yeah. Uh, I've got antibodies. Yeah. Um, I've been working on COVID ITU since the beginning. I have not had a vaccination. I did not want to have a vaccination. Um, uh, the vaccine's reducing transmission only for about eight weeks with Delta. With Omicron it's probably less. And for that I would be dismissed if I don't have a vaccine. It's not, the science isn't strong enough. That's your view. And, and, and your views? Do you have any uh, view on that? I, does that, I respect that, but there's, a, there's also a many uh, I agree with other, different views. Yep, other, other views. Yeah. But yeah. And there's another yeah. colleague yeah. Who's, who's also in the same position. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand that. And obviously, we have to weigh all that up for both health and social care. And there, there will always be a, a debate about it. But mm -hmm. it's Might, a, maybe yeah. there's an opportunity to reconsider with Omicron and the changing picture or at least the nuance it and allow doctors who've had antibody exposure, who've got antibodies, yeah. who haven't had the vaccination, 
to not have it because the protection I've got from transmission is probably equivalent to someone who's vaccinated. Yeah, but at some point that will wait as well. But if you want to yeah. provide protection with a booster, yeah. you'd have to inject everybody every month. If it's worn off by two months, yeah? If, it's yeah. if the protection's yeah. worn off the transmission after two months, yeah. then after a month, you've still got a bit of protection. Yeah. So if you want to maintain protection, you're going to need to boost all staff members every single month, which you're not going to do. No, we will. We take advice on on when, when how much you may yeah, need. But it's not going to achieve yeah. a practical benefit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we take the very best advice that we can. I understand, but yeah. you're from, from, the, from the people that are vaccine experts. Risk. The Omicron surge causing staffing shortages at hospitals nationwide. Now tonight. We're learning about a Washington state hospital system that has reportedly told symptomatic COVID positive staff they can come in and work and see patients. That's where we start tonight's lightning round with KTTH Seattle radio host Jason Rance. Always great to have you back, Jason. Thank you so much for having me. OK, some of your reporting, you say that you were told you could be dizzy, coughing, whatever. Any other symptom aside from a fever, they want us coming in. What's the story? Yeah, so multi-care health systems here in Washington state, they operate a number of hospitals and urgent care facilities here, and they're in a staffing crisis like a lot of other facilities. Now, the state of Washington under Governor Jay Inslee, they forced healthcare providers to fire unvaccinated staff because they posed a so-called risk to the patients. Now, obviously Omicron proves that that's nonsense because the vaccine appears to not be very effective at stopping the spread of Omicron. But here's the question. You've now gotten to the point where you're so desperate for staff that you're bringing back workers, and they acknowledge this, who are actively dealing with COVID. They are COVID positive and they are symptomatic. Tell me how it's safer for a symptomatic COVID positive staff wearing a mask to see patients than an unvaccinated COVID negative staff member who's also wearing masks. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The medical mandate for the, for the nurses and the doctors this is what they're trying to do is absolutely insane. In other states, they have fired nurses for not having vax, even though most of them have natural immunity. So they fire them, but now they're shorthanded. So what are they doing? They are bringing back on the job vaccinated nurses who are co currently COVID positive. So if you're unvaccinated, naturally immune and uninfected, you're, they fire you. But if you're COVID positive, and vax, which we know most of the people that are COVID positive now are vax, they are going back on the job. Um, and it just shows you that CMS mandate is absolutely insane, especially given the ineffectiveness, you know, of, of these shots to actually stop transmission.